Hello everyone and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we're taking a look at the DX Breaking Mammoth and Breaking Mammoth Progrise Key. So the robot itself is called the Breaking Mammoth and then you also get the Breaking Mammoth Progrise Key as you can see up there in the upper left hand corner of the box. Uh, so sometimes for Ryder we get kind of one giant vehicle slash mecha. Last year for Geo we had the Tide Magines. I don't believe Build or x had one. At least I can't think of anything and if I'm blanking on something obvious feel free to yell at me in the comments below um but then ghost had that big weird pirate ship thing with the bike and then of course drive had uh Trideron, and then gaim had the watermelon arms so it's kind of become like the norm to at least have one large mecha type thing per rider uh so here we go this year we have the breaking mammoth i kind of like it i think the design of it is very neat I think these weird progress keys holder things on the wrist are a little goofy looking in my opinion. Um, so I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that works out. But anyway, here's the front of the box. Over here on the side you can see that it has a uh, satellite mode. Because in the show this is the satellite when he transforms that is beaming down to him. Like sending the giant uh, mechanized uh, grasshopper. It's also the thing that sends in the giant phone that turns into his bike, which is a weird thing. Uh, it has a plane mode, and then of course it has the robot mode. Uh, on the back, pretty much just showing us the same thing. It looks like these weird tusks can also be weapons, which looks pretty good. Uh, it looks like uh, zero one can fit inside so of course we'll take a look at that and then of course you can put other progress keys in and all that good stuff uh, it looks like it does have batteries included for the progress key that's included in here that's kind of a cool pick there on the side uh, not too much going on on the bottom on the top just kind of shows the robot and the progress key so I'm gonna go ahead get this guy out of the box and then we'll take a look at everything all right so here we are this is everything you get in the box you have the Breaking Mammoth Progress Key. It's pretty sharp. It's got kind of a metallic finish to the front of it. I actually really like that a lot. So we will come back to this guy a little bit later on for all the sounds and everything. I will use it to show you how it connects into the robot. But for now, I'm just going to put this off to the side. You get this uh, fake plastic like Progress shell. Because they're obviously not going to give you two Progress Keys. But you can connect one in each thing. So... You get a fake plastic one. You have this like jet fuselage type piece. Which has got some translucent red plastic, some gray plastic, a little bit of black paint. Uh, you have these two tusk sword type objects. And then of course the main robot. So there's a little bit of assembly here uh, when you first get this guy. But let's just take a look at the robot first. It looks great. I think they did a nice job with it. Uh, primarily gray and black plastic. You have some nice neon yellow. The driver molded in here I think looks really cool. The uh, robot head up here I really like a lot. And I like how the mammoth head is kind of like molded into the chest. It reminds me very much of like level 99 from X-Aid. You have the ears as the shoulders. The eyes of the mammoth here. The trunk comes down through the driver. And then you're going to take these uh, tusk sword pieces. And you can see how there's kind of... A little space right here that's where these plastic nubs come into play so you just kind of pop it right on there very simple pops on very easily and you can take it off again very easily but that's why the tusks are situated where they are because they're where they would be in the head of the mammoth that you see which makes up the chest of the robot so coming around to the back you can see that there's a little peg hole right there and there you're going to take this fuselage piece and you can see that there are these big red pegs so this is going to pop right in here and then there is a clip right here on the butt and there's a clip right here and you can hear a clip in and it's nice it, it makes the back seem nice and closed it's not like a bunch of kibble or anything it fits pretty nicely streamlined flush with the robot so i think that looks pretty cool so here is pretty much your completed robot um, you can take these and basically how this works is this just slides in here and then you can come around to this one and do the exact same thing and then they just hang there I don't really get what they're accomplishing um, you know you can still you can press the button and it lights up I just I don't 
I don't get it. I don't get what this helps or does. I mean, maybe it's like a shield or something. I just think it looks kind of dumb. Like, this thing very much reminds me of the time machine from Geo in the fact that it's supposed to utilize the gimmick, whereas they had the ride watch plug into the face. Uh, it came with a kind of empty ride watch in case you didn't want to leave a real ride watch pegged in. Um, so in very many respects, this thing reminds me of the time machine, time machines, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think this one looks a little better. I think this is a little bit more successful in the robot mode. Not that there's anything wrong with the Tide Magines. I just think the design of this is a little cooler in my opinion. Um, but I think the Tide Magines definitely pulled off integrating the gimmick into the robot better. Because plugging that ride watch in as the face looked much cooler than just having these hang here on the side. I don't really get what that's accomplishing. Um, so I'm going to take them out for now. Really, the only time I think they look good connected in there is for the satellite mode, and you'll see what I mean a little bit later on. But first, we should take a look at, um, the articulation and everything. So, head can kind of move side to side. It's on this weird, like, I don't know if it's a ball joint, but right at the tip of the chin, it pegs into the head. I'm sorry, the head at the tip of the chin pegs into the chest and you know it just kind of rattles around in there so I don't know <laughs> you can't really like unpeg it I've tried so I don't know whoops and then I can just go ahead and break off the tusk you can, like I said you can peg it right right back in very easily there's a clip up here which is going to come into play later on um but yeah so that thing just kind of wiggles around you have shoulders you can click around like that you have up and down in the shoulders there. You have a bicep swivel. You do have an elbow joint as well. And then you can swivel the fist around. So, I mean, it's a decent amount of articulation in the upper torso. Um, nothing in the waist, but you can move the... I guess you can't really move it back, but you can move it forward in the hip. And then you have... A little over 90 degrees, I'd say, in the knee joint there. You do have a thigh swivel as well. Nothing in the ankle, but... I mean, it's a decent amount of articulation for a robot. Uh, certainly more than we see from Sentai robots. So, can't really complain there. But yeah, I mean, like I said, I think the robot looks neat. I like the articulation. I love the paint. I love the color scheme. I like the design of the head. And I think the shoulders and everything looks very cool. I just think the gimmick just hanging off the forearms looks a little weird. Alright. Um, I forgot to show you how you can pop off these. And then basically how they work is. So if you take these off, the fists will pop in here just like these tabs did. So you can just bring this up. I'm going to do this because I think it works a little better. And then we'll peg this on here. I feel like it's a little bit more difficult to peg this one on than it is to peg it into the chest. But you can go ahead and do that. So maybe something like this. I don't know. The fists definitely look weird when you try to use the elbow joint, I will admit they do, um, but I think he looks cool wielding the little swords, I think that's kind of cool. So I'm going to take these off and put them back on, I promise they come off, come on, there we go, yeah I don't know, I think this obviously just looks better when you just kind of have it like this. But he does have those elbow joints, which you can utilize. They are ready to utilize. Haha. -ha. Anyway, so you're going to go ahead and... I always put these in upside down. I mean, I guess you, you really could if you wanted. This is for the Mantis. You know that Mantis key we just got? Amazing Mantis. Uh, so we'll go ahead and pop this in. And we'll go ahead and get to the satellite mode. All right, for the satellite mode, we're going to go ahead and put the progress key back in. Um, now, technically, if you have another progress key, you can pop it in. But you have to put it in on the back like this way. 
because it's it's weird. It's literally the same piece, but they plug in the exact same way. Isn't that weird? Like, wouldn't you think this piece would just be taken off and completely mirrored like this? So that this would plug in like a mirrored way like this. You would think it would plug in, but no, that's not how it works. You have to plug it in like this. It's really strange. I don't get it. So they can't be the same piece. I don't know. It's weird to me. I'll have to do more looking into this, but I guess they are mirrored. Yeah, it's weird. So I'm going to take this out and I'm just going to put this stupid thing back in. That way at least they're the same color. So for the satellite mode, that's what we're trying to do here. Um, you're going to put this up. Turn these like this. There you go. You're going to spin these around 180 degrees. Push these down flat. Then you're going to bend this at the knee and then bend this at the waist. So that they just kind of sit there. They don't peg into the body or each other. I wish they did one or the other. Um, even if they just kind of tabbed in here or something, but they just kind of sit loose. I mean, it's not a problem. They're a little rickety, but it's not that big a deal. And then you literally just turn it around. And there is the satellite mode. It's all right. It's not amazing. Like I said, this is the, the mode it makes the most sense to put the progress keys in. And I mean, I get it. This thing just floats in space and, and shoots down the robotic grasshopper so he can transform um but you know he's literally just doing like the stomach crunches it's really not that big a deal you can still see the head so it's it's not a great transformation to be honest we'll go right from this into the uh jet or plane mode straighten the legs turn them back around you can stand them up like this bring these in temporarily you're going to turn these at the shoulder <laughs> and you can see right away these come in so turn this and then this will kind of come down and they kind of stop like that's about as far in as they can come and then you can put these back down flat and then you're going to take this piece unhook it bring it around here and then that's where I told you that clip is going to peg in right there. So there you go. That is the jet mode. It's pretty lazy. <laughs> it reminds me again of the Tide Machines because the vehicle mode in that was really not that great. Um, I mean, this kind of looks like a jet. You can kind of angle these a little bit better like that. So it just sits a little bit flatter. It's not great. I mean, it's a jet mode, kind of. You know, it has a kind of fuselage bit at the front. The legs really just hang here. I wish they at least, like, pegged together or something. I don't know. They could have done something. Or maybe if you could, like, take these and, like, unpeg them and peg them here to kind of look like, you know, the back fins of a jet or something like that would have been... Uh, you know, just put that little connector piece here on the shin and then you could maybe connect it there. Just a little something. I mean, honestly, I think that could kind of look cool. Like, let's just play with that just to see if we can... Like, if you could take these off and kind of sit them here. I mean, I know it's not going to stay, but just, just to give you an idea. Like, at least that would look like fins back here to kind of give the jet some kind of shape. Instead of just kind of laying these here lazily. Oh, you know what? I think I put these... I always put these on wrong. Yeah, you really shouldn't put too much pressure on this. But anyway, yeah. So, there's your jet mode. Last feature of the robot. Come around to the back. Flip open the fuselage piece and bring it up. And you'll see here that there are two red clips. It's kind of hard to see because it casts so much shadow, but... You can take your RKF-01 figure and drop him down inside here. And then he clips in. And you can see his head kind of goes behind the mask there. And then you can close it up. 
and hooray, your zero one is inside the robot. All right, taking a look at the Breaking Mammoth Progress key. Definitely kind of has a metallic shine to it, which I kind of like. Uh, just for a comparison here is, say, Shooting Wolf. And you can see that it has a little bit more of a matte finish. Whereas this one just kind of looks a little shiny because he's kind of silver. I like that. I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> it says press, really, like press. Mammoth Ability. So there you go, Mammoth Ability. Uh, coming around to the back, you can see it kind of looks silver back here as well. Zero eleven. That's where you pull the tab out to get the batteries to start going. And then you have your crazy robotic mammoth. And the mammoth. I, I love the little scrunched up mammoth in the little circle over here. I think that looks so great. So let's go ahead and bring in the zero one driver. All right, so let's check this out. Larger than life to crush like a machine. Very cool sound effects there. And like I said, I absolutely love the little scrunched up mammoth in there. Breaking impact. Now try it out in the shot riser. So as usual, the sound effects from the Shot riser kind of supersede the sounds that the key itself makes. And of course, we'll try it in one of the attach cases. So there you have that. I really love the music from the attached shotgun. I think it's really cool. Uh, but yeah, that is all of the sounds using Mammoth in here. Let's go ahead and get the key out. So there we go. 
so at the end of the day, I think the robot's cool. I really do like the design of the robot. The color scheme's neat. I like the head of the mammoth on the chest with the giant tusks. Um, I love the design of the robot head. I just think this progress key hanging off the forearm integration is dumb. I just think it's dumb. Like I said, I understand that they wanted to kind of make a similar type thing to the Tide Machines, but I think the integration of the Ride Watch as the face of the robot works a lot better than having it just like connect to the forearm. I think that's kind of dumb. I also think it's weird how they didn't just make this same piece twice and then, you know, put one on each side so that that way you'd have the front of the progress key on the outside of each instead of having this one have to be inserted with the front of the progress key toward the inside. I think that was kind of a weird choice. Um, I get why they gave you like one real progress key and one plastic shell thing uh, so they'd at least be the same color. But I don't know, man. It's just <laughs> it's a dumb integration of the gimmick into the robot like honestly i'm probably just gonna put this back in the box because i don't care about it and this i'm gonna put you know in the box with the rest of my progress keys and then i'm just gonna display the robot like this because i think this robot is cool um you know i appreciate that he's got you know some some arm articulation it looks a little goofy when you do something like this but you can pretend he's like getting ready for a fight or something like that. Like, I think that looks cool. These are a little weird, but you can put them in his hands as weapons, which I think kind of works. Um, just overall, having the, the progress key just hang off. Like, I get it for the satellite mode because of how it's positioned and having them stick out to the sides and be like the dishes of the satellite. I, I get that part of it, or the solar panels, whatever. I don't know satellites. But in any case, it makes sense. And the, the jet mode is passable at best. Uh, it's not great. It's really just kind of him lying down. But again, the vehicle mode for the Tide Magines was terrible as well. So if you just want a cool robot to just put on your shelf and just look like a cool robot, boom, here he is. You can put Zero One inside, which I think is cool. I like that aspect of it. Um, the the progress key is great. I think the DX Breaking Mammoth is awesome. Uh, sounds are great. The metallic sheen to the front of it is really cool. And... Uh, that, that's it. That's really all I got to say about this one. If you're fine with a Candy Toy or Gashapon Breaking Mammoth, it's coming. You can skip the robot. Um, but this is the only way to get the DX uh, Breaking Mammoth progress key. I think the robot's cool. Like, I'm just going to put this on my shelf as the robot and boom. I think this looks neat. Just the two transformations are kind of meh at best. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, thank you so much for watching.